Hello. So, in this episode, um, I'm kind of going to talk about three topics. Um, not really sure if I'll make three topics exactly. Because two is kind of a combined topic. And this is an idea slash theory of where this game could go. So, I will be talking about Sea of Thieves primarily in this episode. I haven't done one of these in a while, so I'm a little bit sorry that I missed last month. That's why I decided to come in fresh. Um, I've had a very busy month for October, November, and December. And I still try to get these at least one of these done each month. So, I hope you'll bear with me the fact that I missed last month. I'm going to try to do this at the beginning of the month. Um, I do have a very big schedule coming March and kind of during February, too, being it's a short month. But, with all that said, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. <laughs> Alright, so, as I said in the intro, today I will be talking about Sea of Thieves. Now, this is going to be several parts of what I'm going to be talking about. And I know I talk about this a lot on my podcast, but I recently have been live streaming on Twitch for Sea of Thieves. Um, sometimes my daughter's with me, sometimes she's not. But with the release of season eight, you know, I, I I just I don't know what to say in regards to season eight, because I can say everything that everyone else says. Oh, that it's really good. I mean, it hasn't really changed the game because you still have jerks who will come over and destroy your ship and shoot you for no reason. They won't even give you a chance. And it's like, you know, they want to PvP. But they don't want to do it in the arena. And yet these same people go on and say, Oh, well, it's such a grind. I hate it. Or, you know, you got a lot of hackers. First off, why are you hacking this game? Are you that bad at it that you have to hack at it? It's really sad and pathetic. <coughs> and I kind of cannot wait until Rare does crack down on these hackers. People using third party um, software. I really think that's something they need to get done like right away. Another thing they need to do right away. You know, I'm not really trying to tell them how to do their job, but I'm having a lot more glitches than I've ever had playing this game. And this is just in the last week or so. Uh, basically, kind of right after the first weekend of the new adventure that came out. I don't know what the new adventure did to trigger... But, like, every server I go on, I mean, I'm getting, I could be, okay, here's an example. Just recently, I went to go cash out uh, some treasure I had. And I was heading back to my ship because the harpoons, for actually a little longer than this, have been very glitchy in every seaport or every outpost. You can't just harpoon the treasure to the sovereigns anymore unless your ship is parked a little ways away but anyways I was going to go check and see if there was any more treasure I needed to bring over so I jumped off the dock started swimming to my ship started climbing up the ladder 
just got to the top of the ladder and turned to go down. And then I was suddenly back on the dock, falling off the dock because I was mid-walk. And as if that wasn't bad enough, one third of my health was gone. I wasn't attacked. It's like the game rewound itself. It's, you know, very glitchy. I had I have had glitches where I'm climbing up the ladder to my boat, then all of a sudden I'm like fifty feet below underneath the map. At, this happened at New Golden Sands, and I tried I was it was like I was in water, so I tried to swim up to the surface and I tried to go into one of the underground rooms, couldn't get through the walls, couldn't do anything. So, that's been really, really bad. The glitching is a really big problem. As for Season 8, what would I say about Season 8? Well, I would say that it's fun, kind of, if you're good at PvP. The only, the only reason I'm even bothering with it is... Is because I do want to try to get the skeleton curse. And I do want to try to get the ghost curse. Season 8 is. I'd say maybe half over. And. I'm kind of, I'm kind of starting to get worried at this point. Because I only. All these weeks. I I wouldn't say I've been grinding my hardest. But, you know, I do a couple matches here and there, and I try, and I try, and I try. And no matter how much I try, I cannot seem to win. Like, if I win, it's a miracle. I've maybe won 10 out of, like, 50 matches. My win, win ratio is very small. And it, I've actually gotten more guilt or more uh, reputation from turning in flags than actual wins, probably. The most, I, I mean, I'm at level 20 with the Reapers, and I'm at like maybe level 9 or 10 in the Guardians of Fortune. That's either solo or playing with my daughter or playing with a random complete stranger. Which isn't really something I look forward to trying to do. Because a lot of times you got people who don't have mics or you got people that are just jerks. And I mean, going back to the glitching thing, I had a problem today that. My ship respawned at an outpost. Which, okay, granted, yes. You can get in. You can get fighting. But you keep losing. I keep losing to players who are either cheating or to players who are just way better at the PvP. And it's like there's no reward in it for someone who's not. There's no chance for me to better myself. Why? Because, well, most 99% of the players who beat me, beat me because they can one-shot me to death until my ship sinks. Which a lot of players call it spawn camping. Now, okay, maybe rare you have no problem with people spawn camping, but you know what it does? So many times I have quit playing in frustration. The less and less time I play, the less, more and more I'm actually considering never going back to the game. I actually, for the first time last month, I started picking up another game and playing another game. Because I was getting so sick of losing and so sick of being harassed by players while trying to do other things. And this is not just me. This is so many of the new players. So.
so many players out there who have no interest in PvP are still getting harassed. There are people out there that I've run into. And in, yes, it's a small majority. But there are people out there who they just want to fish. Or they just want to do the tall tales. And then you get people who come over. And, you know, you see a ship. You have to instantly, like, run for your life. They could not even, they could possibly not even be chasing you. But it so, makes you so paranoid. Like, how can you build a game that should be bringing people together? Yet making anybody afraid to get near anybody because half the people will attack you on sight and the other half are going to run away. There's no cooperation. There's no incentive to work together. And now they made season eight. I actually, really honestly, like the second day Season 8 was out. I was like, wait a minute. I got an idea. I'll team, I'll go on the Reapers side and I'll team up with some Reaper ships. And I tried this strategy. I actually tried. I found another Reaper ship. It was a galleon. I was a sloop. And I got the crew to listen, to hear me out because I stayed on the Ferry of the Damned until somebody died. And it just so happened to be a Reaper. A, one of the crew members from the Reaper ship. And I told him, I said, hey, here's my plan. One of us goes into the game and one of us stays out. And then when we get to a, a, a ship up to a streak five, we cash out, we swap. So if my sloop goes to streak five, then once I hit streak five, I cash out. Then it's the galleon's turn. And I provide extra fire to power for the, you know, putting the sweat on the one ship that should spawn up. Now, originally, I actually thought, you know, maybe we should do this like four ships. Because you're only allowed to have five ships on a server, which means only one ship will spawn in at a time. But we tried this and we waited for like an hour and no ships spawned up. Now, maybe this would change now, but now they've made it to where only the ship in the battle gets the points. So it's less likely for people to do this. Now, you might say this is underhanded and that people shouldn't be doing this. But you know what? This goes in line with their own lore. With the very lore of the game. Ramsey, the pirate... Uh, King or what is he? Uh, basically, he's the pirate king. Uh, he basically was the one who was sporting for ships to ally against their enemies, to make friends instead of fighting each other, instead of bickering over gold, actually working together. To fight enemies. Which you know. That would actually. Be beneficial. You could make friends with groups. If Rare has a problem with this. Then they should make it where. You know. Okay. Well. If you want to do that. Only two ships per alliance. And. Allow six ships on the server. That way if... I mean, there's no way you can convince everybody to do it. Some people are going to be like, no. I mean, there's a... I mean, a vast majority of the game's players are cowards anyway. If this isn't you, well, congratulations. You're one of the lucky few. And what do I mean by this? Well... So many times that I'll be solo slooping, not even trying to battle other players, just going around, doing forts, collecting treasure, and doing tall tales, 
and I will be attacked by a brigantine that's fully crewed or a sloop that has two people to my one person and one will spawn camp me and many times that this has happened I've actually had it where these people keep killing me but do not sink my ship and they keep telling me oh well scully your ship then scully your ship because you know what I shouldn't have to. You, There's no reason you don't get points for killing me. You're wasting your time. And you're a coward. Because you know you got the advantage. Because the black screen of death makes that m very possible. Even a three second black screen you're already on the ship and they can already take aim at you and fire before you've even had a chance to finish spawning in. In three seconds. And sometimes I've had it where I start a black screen and I wind up back on the Ferry of the Damned. Now that doesn't happen too often. But I've had many matches where I'm stuck in a black screen and I lose the match because, well, they were spawn camping me. And when in, the time is against me and I got to hurry up and get back and try to bucket, get at least one bucket off my ship. There I'm hearing my ship sink around me, but I can't do nothing to stop it. This black screen stuff really needs to stop because it's like the bane of the player existence and it's stuff like this that will push new players away there was a time during uh december that my daughter really really thought about quitting and i brought this up on twitch and i said you know i'm sorry for my language but she really learned a lesson because she went into this game wanting to make friends, wanting to talk to people and play the game with people. And I kept telling her, Cora, no, you can't do that. This is not that kind of game. You can't make friends here. This is not a place for friends. This is a very protect yourself kind of a game. If you want friends, you've got to have friends in real life. That will play the game that you can play with. Because you can't trust anybody in the game. And this little kid, and I could tell it was a little kid by his voice. He was talking to us. And they were going to attack us at first. But then they asked for our help. They got glitched out of the game. Their ship was left behind. The little, the main little kid came back to his ship. But the other little kid, he got annoyed and he quit. So this little kid, he had changed his crew to open. And he asked us for help. So we were helping him. We were taking him around to islands. We were showing him things. I was being nice. I was letting my daughter call the shots. Because we were in the middle of a veil, a legend of the veil. We had two of the stones. We had, we were going to go to the tornado to fight the fortresses. But we didn't want to take this brand new kid along. Because we knew he'd probably end up getting himself sunk. So we were going to help him out. Get him on his way. Point him in the right direction. What to do. And... Show him some tips and tricks so he could level up, so he could go buy his own ship. And the kid, like I said, he changed his crew to open. And this new p person joined his ship. Not new, as in new to the game, just new to his crew. Uh, joined his ship and instantly started attacking us. And the kid was basically forced into attacking with him because what were we going to do but attack back and my daughter was in freaking tears she was distraught 
to the point where she almost walked away from the game forever. And I told her, I, I sat her down, I said, you know, this right here, this is an example of why I told you to begin with, this was not that kind of game. And now she doesn't trust anyone in this game. She doesn't. I mean, she she still has that glimmer of hope. I think somewhere deep inside her that you know maybe one day she'll find somebody who will be nice and meet peacefully and actually want to play the game with her. But besides her daddy, you know. Um, but she is not letting her guard down anymore. She's not trusting she's not trying to make friends which really hurts how this game is supposed to be played because things like this is gonna ultimately it's gonna end up pushing her away she actually wants to play this game less and less because of the fact of having such a bad experience and i can't blame her because there's been times I say, screw this game. I don't want to keep playing it. But, I do like the game. I like the gameplay itself. I like sailing the ship around, finding the treasure, getting the commendations, playing the tall tales when I'm able to. The challenge is what I like. But, you can't grow if you can't improve. And when you can one-shot blunderbust a person over and over and over and over and over again, it gets old. So, how do they fix this? How do they fix things to make the players actually want to play this game more? To get the people who are into PvE into PvP. You know, I watch a lot of different streamers. I watch a lot of different YouTubers play this game. And I gotta say, you know who's actually the closest to getting everything right that Rare needs to do is Hippo TC. I'm not a big fan of the fact that he harasses people by stealing their Chest of Legends all the time. Uh, but, I mean, he, he does doesn't always go out of his way to kill the players either. He tries to just take the treasure and go. It's more of a challenge for him leaving you alive, letting you try to come after him. But they've been playing this game so long, they know the tricks of running. So they're really good at it. I'm still learning because I haven't even come up on my first year and I won't be on my first year until August. And I think I've come a pretty far away in a short time in a half a year so he you know he's made comments he's made ideas that could improve upon what season eight has changed because yes it is true season eight has changed a vast majority of the game but people aren't taking to it you know, honestly, I felt like, oh, great, Season 8's going to come out. It's going to be very PvP heavy. You're going to have PvP on demand. So nobody will bother people on the map if they're not, A, threatening them, B, trying to do a, for, a Legend of the Veil, or carrying a Reaper chest, the two things that can get you killed. If you're just doing a tall tale or you're just doing, you know, random treasure hunts, then people will leave you alone now because there's no, there's nothing in it for them to come along and sink you when they can easily die beneath the waves, go into a PvP match if they really want to fight another player. But no, we still have plenty of cowards who want to get on unsuspecting pirates just to ruin other people's day who aren't trying to PvP. And they get away with this because they can one-shot blunderbust you. I'm sorry, the blunderbust, it should do two shots. 
The only thing that should do a one-shot kill is maybe the Eye of Reach with a headshot. Everything else should should give like the blunderbuss should do like 50 damage. That way you have to shoot twice, and that's only if every single pellet hits you, the pirate. So each pellet should do like five damage. 25, I think, is good for the pistol, which I think is what it's at. I think it's at 70 for the eye of reach. I don't know how much it is for the sword, but the sword should do only like 25 also. The sword and the pistol should be equal. That's the first thing they should change. I really don't feel that there should be any player that should have the ability to one-shot because that makes it to a point where you can't even try to defend yourself. Even if I spawn in and they shoot me with a blunderbuss, then they got to get that second shot off. And in the time it takes them to get that second shot off, I could eat something or jump off the ship or do something to at least try to defend myself. Which at least will give me a small glimmer of hope and a chance to actually improve my skill rather than just spawn, die. Spawn, die. Spawn, die. Ship sunk. There, There is no way to improve upon from that. I have, tr you know, I've tried to blunderbuss people myself. And for some reason, they always survive. Yet they always kill me. I don't know how. Maybe that's because people are hacking. Maybe that's a problem. Maybe that's the biggest problem right there is the hacking. You know, a lot of people have been complaining about it. I don't know if it's actually going on. But if it is, you know, well, Rare, get on that. But no, I feel like the, the one-shot kills... Gives you no room to improve. And it pisses people off to the point where they're like, okay, fine. Screw this game. I'm going to go play a game where I can actually learn. Like, people said, um, you know, oh, Elden Ring was so hard. Elden Ring's so tough. And then people were like, well, get good at the game. Well, I'm trying to get good. But you cannot get good if you spawn and then you die. With no chance... No second to do anything. It is impossible. It's like, here's a math test. Fill out the answers. Now I'm taking the math test away. Here's the math test. And before I can touch my pencil to the paper, they take it away. And they just keep doing that again. And again, and again. <coughs> oh, class is over. You lose. Thank you for trying to test. How can you improve if you don't even have a chance? To And the people who are clearly doing this are people without lives. The people that can play for 20 hours in a day because they don't have lives. Now, you might just say I'm being bitter, but it's the actual truth. You know, maybe not that people play for 20 hours. I mean, I don't know. I don't really know how long these people play. But the one shot, yeah, you cannot improve if you don't even get a chance to do anything back. And... Yeah, it's just, it's freaking insane. And the problem is the blunderbuss, mainly. That's the problem. Because when I've had people take swipes at me with a sword, or shoot at me with a pistol, yeah, I lose like half my life in the first hit. Maybe they hit me before I even actually respond in, but, you know, I lose half my life, it seems. And then I know this because I eat a pomegranate, which
which is supposed to be of the one bite fruits. You know, the ones not like pineapples or fish or that come in two servings per item. But it's supposed to be the one that's supposed to give you the most. At least that's what everyone on YouTube says is that pomegranates of coconuts, mangoes, bananas, pomegranates, pomegranates give you back the most life. And yet I'm still always like short on life when I eat that. So I think they nerfed that down. And I think they should make it where, yeah, it does give you back the most life. If that has been nerfed. Um, so, I don't think Sea of Thieves is necessarily going to die. But I don't see Season 8 lasting much longer. Because the only people who are playing it... Um, well, they're the people who uh, are the cheaters. And they're just doing it to grind through and magically get all the points in the world so they can get the ghost curse and stuff. And, yeah, it's really sad. But that's not the only thing I'm going to talk about in this video. Hello there. I promise we'll get right back to the video shortly. I just wanted to say that many writers, YouTubers, readers, and gamers often talk about one thing that they all share in common, and that is drinking coffee. And perhaps you're tired of going out and ordering expensive high-end coffees and cappuccinos from huge corporations and are looking for a way to have that same or better coffee brewed right in your own home. So I want to ask that you consider trying Coffee Brand Coffee. You can order from an array of different blends that will be delivered right to your door. And if coffee is not your thing, they also have teas, cocos, and chocolates. Why am I doing this, you may ask? Well, for a long time now, I have been a fan of a channel called The Quartering, which is constantly reporting on the news and the head of the channel, Jeremy, has worked really hard for his viewers over the time I've watched this channel. He has done so much helping out others and smaller channels, working hard to make several videos a day, which I can tell you does take quite a good amount of work. And recently, he started his own coffee company. So if you're willing to try and change to a better coffee, tea, or K-cup because you need that sweet caffeine fix to get you through writing that next novel, reading that next book, playing that new video game long into the late hours of the night, or starting off early in the morning for a long live stream then head over to the website for Coffee Brand Coffee or check out the channel The Quartering and see what delicious specials they have going on. For thousands of years, the world has been protected by the Guardian of Light, or as he is more commonly known, Santa Claus. Over the centuries, factors such as fear and prejudice, greed and jealousy, Misunderstandings, betrayal, and war have segregated most humans from the magical world of elves, fairies, wizards, and the like. This has resulted in many misconceptions and generalizations of the true nature of Santa and his world. This six-book series by Sean Connaughton begins as the current of a long series of guardians is murdered by a group of monstrous enemies recently escaped from an enchanted South Pole prison. These creatures are loyal to the darkness an evil force determined to exterminate the light in order to enslave all creatures of the world. Shane Connor, an average young man, suddenly finds himself being trained as the new guardian. As he adapts to his new life among fantastic creatures, he goes on an adventurous quest with a legendary wizard for the ultimate weapon to use against the darkness, and faces murderous enemies like Rasputin, Morgana Le Fay, Krampus, and many more. 
Along with his best friend, Joe Gomez, Shane encounters politics, history, mysterious murders, new loves, his own hidden past, and racial dynamics among the fantasy races that turn out to be all too real. Their adventures reveal the true nature of the world and challenge the current state of how all races interact. This series expertly melds myths, legends, history, faiths, folklore, and secret societies into a fascinating, cohesive, comprehensive world of wonder and magic. From Atlantis to Olympus, from Hades to the moon, and from broomstick races to Christmas deadlines, join the new Santa Claus on his amazing journey. But beware, will Shane's quest achieve his ultimate goal of destroying the darkness and preserving the light of the world? Or is he actually playing right into a plot by dark forces that will result in his, and our, ultimate doom? So make your list and check it twice for the Guardian of Light book series. Download your audiobook or ebook today from Audible, Amazon, or iTunes. So now I want to address my thoughts on what I think they could do in regards to season nine or ten. I mean, season nine is supposed to have a big focus, supposedly, supposedly on the single players in the game. Now, we'll see how much of this is actually true once Season 9 comes out. But, I did think of something quite interesting. And what I thought of was this. I think that pirates, or every player should be able to give their pirate a name. Now, when you go through this process, it will, I mean, it's basically going to be automatic when you sign in the next time you play the game. You will be prompted to enter a name for your pirate. And there will be a long little thing to read, basically suggesting that you don't put Words like captain or uh, it, things that are inappropriate because the inappropriate names will automatically be um, not allowed. It'll automatically be, uh, nope, you can't use that. You also won't be able to use numbers. So there's no trying to trick the system in by putting... P-E-N-1-5. No, you can't do that because that word is not allowed. The numbers are not allowed. You have to pick a name. They can also include, um, like, famous names. For example, they could put famous names as not allowed. Um, ones that already exist in the game. Ones that are highly known fictional characters or real pirate names. I don't know. I mean, the most popular. Of course, you know, you put Jack Sparrow on the list. Otherwise, you're going to have like 15 players running around with the name Jack Sparrow. Because they don't have an original thought in their head to think of their own name that they could make up. I mean, everybody has a fictional name they would want to be called. So, after you name your pirate, you are given a little uh, well, a, a little interaction, we'll call it. When you get into the game, wherever you're at, whatever bar you're at, the um, pirate lord will appear before you and he'll say, congratulations, pirate. You have finally made a name for yourself. Welcome to what it means to be a true pirate. 
and you will be given a commendation. That way, everybody, every new, brand new player to the game gets this one free commendation, which is becoming a real pirate. Is what it what it is. It's called that's the combination. Becoming a real pirate. And then once you own your own ship, well Ramsey will tell you or the pirate lord will tell you that you now have a bounty just being a pirate. One of the things that's been majorly lacking for my pirate game is some sort of bounty hunter system or some sort of bounty system for pirates. And he will show you a poster. It will have an image of your character. Maybe not exactly accurate. Maybe this image will update once per season. With whatever you're currently wearing at the time the bounty poster is issued. But anyways, and at that time, when you see your bounty, the bounty will be something like 50 gold times the number of commendations. So a brand new player who just named their character and logged in to play the game for the first time who gets that one free accommodation just for starting will already be at 50 gold. Their bounty will automatically start at 50 gold. And the more and everybody knows Getting commendations in this game is pretty darn easy. And it doesn't go towards your ship. It only goes towards your pirate commendations. So, completing Tall Tales, doing PvE, doing PvP. All of these are factors in the commendations you can earn. So, only a handful of the best players in the world ever possibly reach the max of commendations that are earned. And some of us may never reach it, ever. You could start tomorrow and grind down everything in possible, but because we weren't around for the several first few seasons or years this game has existed, there are probably commendations we will never earn. So any combination you have, take all the combination your pirate has, times that number by 50, and that's how much gold your bounty would be. So this would actually give older players a reason and a need to help newer players out, to help newer players achieve those combinations. Why? Because... The more they learn, the more they play, the higher their bounty goes. Which means you could turn around at the end and kill them. And, or you don't kill them. You sink their ship. And when their ship is sunk, little bounty poster will fly up, float up to the top with all the rest of the stuff. And those players can grab it. Now... There will be a tr there will be a system there there should be a system in place that if you are attacked or you fire your cannon there's a 5 minute cooldown. Basically, if you fire your cannon, yeah, that starts a 5 minute cooldown. Why 5 minutes? Because it's not very long in real time. But it's just long enough that you can't escape a battle this way. You can't just log out properly and escape without your bounty floating to the top. 
And that's what I'm going to say. If you're not being attacked, if you log out, if you leave the game through the menu like you're supposed to, then your ship is safe. Your bounties are safe as well. Nobody will find your bounty posters. I mean, they should already be doing this. But the bounties could be in the logbooks and be able to be turned in at Reapers or any other place. Or they can make a whole new faction just for bounty hunting. And maybe you sell it to the Sovengers or Sovengers. Or maybe you sell it to these bounty hunters. Maybe selling it to the Sovengers gives you less. But selling it to the Bounty Hunters Alliance or something gives you more. So that's my thoughts. That's my idea for Season 9 or 10. I'm, I'm going to say maybe Season 10. Because I think it's a little too late for them to add that into Season 9. Although that would be awesome and epic. But I mean I've got it all worked out. You know, it would be a good chance. It would help PvP. It would help PvE. It would just help all around. Because people will strive to get all the combinations they can. To be one of those top players. And who knows? Maybe there's even a... There could be even a leaderboard one day. Not right away. But maybe in time, you know, the top 50 players will be... Po their bounties copies of their bounties posters will be viewable you know so if you want your name if you want your bounty poster on the board you got to get kraken and not like the kraken kraken but <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> no pun intended um but yeah i mean then you just got to get on doing all the tall tales completing all the tall tales three times each like you're supposed to do uh to get those special items or to get those things or to unlock like i still want to get the glitter beard but i can't find enough people to help me out to do it which is really sad that they put such a great thing in this game that i can't get a hold of and i can't pay respects to the person who died. Because there aren't enough good players ever on my server to achieve that. Because I wasn't lucky enough to, when they first announced it, and probably a ton of people were doing it left and right, because I wasn't around for that. Now it's almost impossible because I am not finding enough players that are willing to do it. Which is really sad. And finally before I go. Now that I finished talking about my bounty hunter system. That I really think would help the game. Um, the last thing I want to do. Is call attention to the Oreo set. Which is a real shame. Back uh, during January. Oreo did a thing over in Europe. Where they released a special set. And it wasn't available for us here in the U.S. Now, people in the U.S. have gotten it through ill-gotten means or nice people who gave them codes. But, yeah, I mean, what's up, Oreo? Why are you hating the U.S.? Isn't that where you're stationed? What's wrong with just making it available to the world for a limited time? I think this was a huge misstep, and I'm really hoping that Oreo is going to come back and do something different and actually decide, you know what, yeah, let's put it in the U.S. now. We made so much money in the Europe's countries, let's just do it in the U.S. We'll make even more money. I think they should do that, so. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this. I really hope you, uh, I hope someone from Rare hears all this. I hope they hear this, take it to heart, because it would mean a lot to me and probably a lot of the other new players if we actually had a chance to improve at your game. 
And I think that bounty system is a good start, so. They say Rare listens to its fans, so let's see if they listen to this fan. I want to thank you all so much for listening, and I will talk to you later. Bye.